Right behind me is a special brewery that needs no introduction, but I'll give you one anyway. They started out as a brew pub, then opened a canning line, and now they're in their new facility in Stowe, Vermont. We're at The Alchemist. Let's go inside and find out what John, Jen, and the rest of the crew are cooking up here on The Brewery Show. Uh, my name is John Kimmick, and I am a co-owner and co-creator of The Alchemist. I brewed my first batch of homebrew in 1991 uh, with my brother-in-law. It was a life-changing experience. It was very cool. We made a batch of porter, and it was what inspired me to, to get into brewing. My name is Jen Kimmick. I am the co-owner of The Alchemist. I'm also the general manager. I oversee operations, financial planning, things of that nature. My name's Joel Hartman and um, position, that's a fun one. Uh, it's sort of changed and evolved over the five years we've been open. When uh, Jen and John opened The Alchemist uh, Brew Pub in Waterbury, uh, that was 2003, and there still wasn't a whole lot of brew pubs around. And so I was drawn to it and I went in uh, shortly after they opened, introduced myself and I was uh, bartending there within a couple months of them opening. So I've been with uh, The Alchemist for uh, a little more than 12 years now. My name is Chelsea Nolan. Uh, I am a brewer. I've been working at The Alchemist probably been three years. After the retail shop closed, um, John and Jen were nice enough to not let us go. The stipulation was kind of find something to do. And I tried everything I could, like canning line, cellaring, online sales, delivery. And I just happened to fall into brewing and I loved it and it just made sense and it worked out for everybody. And so that's just where they told me to stay and the rest is history. The Alchemist is just the culmination of mine and Jen's dream. The symbol is actually taken from uh, the original Vermont Pub and Brewery symbol. I was having beers with Greg one day at the bar and I said, what is that little symbol? He said, it's the alchemic symbol for fermentation. And it, I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And so when we were coming up with names, that symbol was gonna be our symbol. And I asked him if we could use it and he said, of course. And so the alchemist just kind of branched out of that. I was a business logistics major at Penn State. When I finally graduated, I got a job at a place called Country Wines. I was living in Pittsburgh. It was a homebrew shop, and I got paid $4.75 an hour <laughs> and had everything at my fingertips. You know, I had all the ingredients, all the equipment. I got everything at a discount. Uh, there was every periodical ever written, every book ever written at my fingertips. It was like my own beer library that I could take home at night. I would take a different chunk of magazines every other day and pour through them and just devour everything about it. I moved to Vermont specifically because one of the books that really grabbed me was uh, Greg Noonan's book, Brewing Lager Beer. Greg was really one of the leading voices in the craft beer movement at the time and I decided he was gonna teach me how to make beer. I was gonna, that's who I wanted to work for. Packed everything I owned and moved to Vermont, walked into the Seven Barrel Brewery and introduced myself and said, I wanna learn how to make beer from you and I'll take whatever job you can give me to make that happen. So he made me a waiter. So I would wait tables five nights a week and I would go in on weekends and work for free in the brewery with a, uh, my late friend Paul White, he was the brewer then, and we just kind of learned together. His first batch of being head brewer was my first commercial sized batch ever. Man, we had great times and made mistakes together and learned together, and I did that for like a year until Greg offered me the head brewer job at the Vermont Pub and Brewery, which is a landmark. I met John shortly after graduating from college. I went to UVM. I was traveling a bit and I was working at the Vermont Pub and Brewery and John had come on as a young brewer. Kitchen door swung open and there she was. And, uh, and it blew me away. I couldn't even, who is this, you know? We quickly fell in love. You know, I loved his beer and everything about him. And, uh, and so I asked her out and she said no. 
And uh, so I played it cool, and two weeks later, she came back and asked me out, and that was it. We've been married, we just had our 19th wedding anniversary. For the first eight years of our marriage, we traveled a bit, we worked for a lot of other people, built out some breweries, saving as much money as we could, but mostly during that time, John was really focused on developing recipes for beer. So he had a homebrew system he would brew on out in the garage no matter where we lived. We moved to Key West, <laughs> of all places. We thought we were just gonna hang out for the winter and have fun but we lasted six weeks, it was crazy. So I had good college friends that were living in Jackson Hole. Let's move to Jackson Hole. So we packed everything up again, drove to Jackson, and then began to work our lives away to, to get where we are now. We worked terrible, terrible jobs, cleaning toilets, just doing whatever we had to, to, to make money and to survive. We're either gonna get sucked in here and be ski bums for the rest of our lives or we got to get out of here and, and get moving. So we moved back east. We thought Boston was going to be our place. We loved the city of Boston. We were there for over two years. We actually got to the point where we were looking at locations and trying to find places to open The Alchemist. And at the same time, I was really working on a good financial plan, a good business plan. And we were right back to work in multiple jobs, two jobs at a time. Finally windowed it down to one job at a time. The summer of 2003, we were out for a drive on a day off and we drove through Waterbury and we saw what became The Alchemist. The business there was going out of business so we tracked down the landlord and pitched our idea and in later conversations he told me that he was going to tell us no, but then he figured, you know what, these guys, I just got a gut feeling about it, I think, what the heck, you know, and so I quit my job started construction full-time on the demolition and construction. And in early 2003, we opened up our brew pub, and really, that was the vision. All we ever wanted was to have a brew pub where the community would feel um, welcome, be able to enjoy some great beer, unpretentious atmosphere. That was really the goal. Um, this was never a part of the plan to have a large, uh, not a large, but a larger sized production brewery. So that Thanksgiving, we we're going to open the next night. Um, we sat and had Thanksgiving dinner with our head chef and his wife. He just cooked for us and we sat and had this great time. And the next night we opened. And uh, that was a Friday. And we had 50 bucks in our bank account. Like we were broke. Everything we had had been spent. And if we weren't busy and successful, we were doomed. And thankfully we were busy right out of the gate. I would go in early in the morning and brew all day. She'd come in, we'd switch. She'd work at the pub all night, like a hamster wheel. We were doing that for like nine years. It was a lot of talking into from Jen um, to get us to the point, to get me to the point where I was ready to open a second place. And that's when we started planning our brewery in Waterbury, the cannery, with the idea that we were just gonna make a small amount of Hetty Topper in a package for the first time ever. We'd never did growlers. We had, we had done one test run of bottling with Hetty, kind of as after we had decided to do this, just to gauge what's going on. Because before then, we were just in that fishbowl of a pub. You know, you read about things, people talk, write about us, but it, we weren't really aware. We announced to our employees and at our Christmas party that we were gonna build this place. Again, here I am, I'm brewing, I'm going over there doing demolition with Joel, who still works for us. We're tearing down ceilings, getting the place ready, and we were building building, building, and then the, you know, tropical storm Irene hits the end of August, so we're literally in the home stretch to open, and Sunday night, we get the call, I go into town, there it is, you know, the place is ruined. It was the day before our first cans were supposed to roll off the line. If it wasn't for the fact that we had started that project, you know, six, seven months before, I don't know what I'd be doing now. It's something totally different, I'm sure. So I'm over there cleaning, pumping a nightmare out of our basement, and Jen was in water bear at the cannery getting that going because now that's our sole source of income. And so we just started, while rebuilding our building, we owned that place, hoping that the alchemist was going to return, all the while taking whatever money we weren't putting into that and pouring it into just expanding what we had. You know, So we were at 1,500 barrels of capacity when we opened we immediately doubled that to 3,000 because that was our lifeblood. 
Within six months, we were able to do another bump and get it up to 6,000 barrels a year. Within another couple months, we did all kinds of demolition inside, raised ceilings, all kinds of things to accommodate larger tanks and get us to 9,000 barrels. You know, I mean, we got word from our insurance company that we were basically screwed. They weren't really gonna cover hardly anything. We could never get insured to have a brewery in that basement again, and that's when we made the tough decision to not reopen the pub. There were these new special designated um, flood zone regulations because FEMA had come in, and one of those regulations said that there is to be no new basement construction. Well, it was such a small space, we had to have our brewery in the basement, and so our option was to just run a freestanding restaurant, and we had no interest in that. So we renovated the building, gutted it, rebuilt it, and we leased it out um, to the Prohibition Pig, and then they bought the building a couple of years ago, and that's been a really great fit for him and for the town of Waterbury. And it's a beautiful place, but our full focus was on making Hetty Topper in Waterbury. We've created like 25 jobs there in Waterbury, so we made up the jobs that were lost at the pub, and then some. It became so busy that we couldn't have those people on a property anymore. It was a it was an issue. It was a safety issue with traffic, everything. We made the decision, that's it. We're closing down retail. We're gonna go to 100% distribution. We self-distribute. We were doing a portion of it and selling a portion out retail, so then we just geared everything to distribution. At that point, we're cut off. You know, we have no interaction with our customers. We started doing truck sales and stuff like that and having fun events, but it's just not the same. And of course, people are saying we didn't make enough. We were intentionally not making as much as we could so that the demand was there, which is just crazy. We were, you know, making as much as we could because we needed the money, to be frank. For the last five and a half years, everything we've made has gone back into that brewery, increasing production and dreaming of this place. And here we are today. <laughs>
and it smells great for a little bit, but I'll challenge anybody to, to deny that your last three ounces of that glass, as opposed to the last three ounces that you're gonna taste out of a can, night and day. I can't tell you how many beers, if it's poured, you get to the end and it's like, ugh, you know? It tastes just lifeless and all the love is gone. I'll have a can at home and I'll nurse it and I'll come back an hour later and be like, oh, I still have a little bit left. And you hit that beer and it tastes like that first sip. Geez, you've got this amazingly popular make 100,000 barrels of Hetty Topper. And it's like, well, no, that's just not how we do things. You know, we, we prefer to, that's a lot of beer. 9,000 is a lot of beer. We do 9,000 a year there and we do 9,000 a year here. We prefer to keep it perfect and keep our eye on what's really important, which is not sitting on a mountain of money at the end of the day. It's, it's what you create around you and what you leave behind when you're, when you're dead, you know? So we could have built this brewery to make 50,000 barrels a year. And there's a lot of small breweries now that are doing that. We want our customers back in and we want to have enough beer to satisfy everybody, but not be one of those breweries that has to distribute the six different states to get rid of their beer. Some of the really cool things about this place that we're so excited about, our artistic side, which we were able to express in the pub and what it became over those nine years, we're gonna bring that back into here. We've built this place specifically with these high ceilings. We wanna create a mood when you walk in, but those high white ceilings aren't gonna be white forever. As we find artists that we love, we bring them in, we commission them to do pieces, and we'll say, that's your section, it's yours, have at it. You know, and so within a decade, this place is gonna be these blank walls are gonna be canvases and it's gonna be the most amazing place. So the artistic outlet, the, the ability to make the beers that I used to make at the pub, we have a wastewater facility that we've invested in that is in-house, that we take our waste stream and actually bring it down to concentrations less than an average three-bedroom household. Our brewery in Waterbury is powered 100% by solar. This will be, probably within a couple years, we'll be able to make arrangements to have this place solar powered. The use of natural light, the efficiency of the equipment, and the level of potential with this place now and that place combined is, is like we've never had before. Everyone that works here and is part of the production process really takes to heart the importance of quality and, and we're constantly reviewing our process. Honestly, it makes the job more interesting for everyone too, you know, I mean, if you stay involved with always trying to evolve it. But that's, yeah, something that, you know, I don't see everywhere I go. You definitely go to some production facilities. I'm not talking just beer, just any production facility and sometimes you just see people standing there. And, yeah, so and, and that's really uh, one of the reasons why we've kept our production small and our brew house small and, and uh, have not gotten into much of the automation that's available in this industry now. Um, because, you know, when you get away from a guy opening and closing a valve and putting his hands on the process, you know, I think you get further away from craft. For a while we're experimenting with putting what I'm trying to get across about the beer on print. And you just can't. You can't explain what we're shooting for in a hundred words. So the videos are a great way to do it, you know? And so, especially for those beers that are such small batch and just disappear, to be able to just blip that with your phone and then watch this video and have me explaining the beer to you as you drink it, it goes a long way. And uh, it just creates a better interaction with our customer gets them a little more involved in what we're doing. And in 30 years, we'll look back and be like, oh, look how young I was. <laughs> I think it still surprises all of us uh, how far people will come for our beer. And we're so appreciative of all the people that come to visit. It does give you a boost. You know, it does, it does make you want to strive to keep doing a better job every day. We do have a, a following and it's flattering, you know. It's just reaffirming that what Jen and I define as great beer, others agree. And to see people's faces light up and when they come in and 
Ah, and they smell it, and they, you know, I mean, you can see them, they're so excited, grown men like six-year-olds on Christmas morning. For John and I, and for our staff, there's so many different ways we measure success, you know, and you know, the quality of the beer is what drives our success, but for us it's really about the planet, it's about the people that work for us and the people in our community. You can't just focus on the beer, you have to focus on the people that are creating the beer. What we try to create in our circle of influence carries right into the beer. I've learned a ton, and there's still a ton to learn, but that's what's so exciting about it, you know? It's like just every, almost every day, there's something new and different beers to try, and I can't picture myself doing anything else. I was a health science major, I waited tables, I tried every, you know, I was like a receptionist. I just tried everything, and I was like, maybe something will stimulate me, but nothing did until I started brewing. <laughs> it's changed my life, honestly. And it's nice to have a fridge full of Focal and Heady all the time. You know? <laughs> it just, it is a lot of fun to come to work and continue to try to improve all of these systems we have. And uh, when you come up with an idea and, and you put it in place and it really does make a difference. It's just, it, it really does make it easy to get up and keep coming. I just would like to say to anyone watching this, thank you so much for the support and uh, we really appreciate you guys. Like to have the freedom to do what you want and find success in doing what you want, it, it, you know, it's awesome. And so there you have it. That is the Alchemist Brewery here in Stowe, Vermont. Thanks for checking out the episode. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and all those other social networking sites. All the links are in the description. Uh, if you want to get more episodes, be sure to follow along on our journey. And uh, we'll see you at the next brewery. Thanks for watching. Cheers.